I spent a lot of my life reading through documentation like this. I'm dyslexic, which means going through this and picking out the bits that are relevant to me and my use case is pretty tedious. So I created a chatbot where I can throw in any URL that I like and I can chat with that webpage and get the information that's specific to me without having to go trawling through and find which bits are relevant, which bits aren't relevant and what it all means. I can ask questions, I can go back and forth, ask it to explain things. Today, I'm gonna to show you exactly how you can build that too. So to show you how it works before I build it, I'm gonna simply put in here, um, very simply explain how a switch works in NA10. I'm going to put in the URL of the documentation from NA10 and I press go. We're using Gemini and uh, we've created a custom workflow tool for this. And as you can see, it's taken in all that information. It's come back with an answer and I can go into more detail, ask it questions and query anything. And again, you can use this for whatever web page that you like. It doesn't just have to be documentation. It could be anything that you like. So let's get into building it and I'll show you how it works. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna to want to do is create a new workflow within NA10. I'm gonna call it uh, chat with webpage uh, demo. Okay, now the first thing we want to do is add in a chat, because that's how we're gonna interact with it. We're gonna add a chat trigger. That's fine, we can close that for now. Then we're gonna add in a tools agent. So if we go here and go uh, AI agent, and then there we have the tool agent. Okay, so with the tool agent, what we need to connect is a chat model, we need to have some memory, and of course, we need to have a tool, which we'll create in just a second. But first of all, let's select our chat model. So you could really choose from any ones that you want to hear. This is not particularly technical what we're doing, so you're gonna get largely the same response from uh, any model that you use. I'm gonna use um, Google Gemini, I'm gonna use uh, Two Flash Experimental, I'm enjoying working with Gemini at the moment. It's got some uh, great free limits and also great performance and really quick as well. So uh, yeah, we're gonna use that today. Memory, we're just gonna connect the standard Windows buffer and we're gonna put in 10. This is so we can have a proper conversation and a back and forth about the web page and about the contents. It doesn't just remember one message, it remembers, uh, well, 10, 10 messages. And you can make this as long as you want, but obviously the longer you make it, the more expensive in terms of AI it's gonna be. So we'll have that. And then what we're gonna to need to do is create our tool and our tool here is going to uh, take the URL of whichever web page we want. It's going to go and retrieve all of the information from that web page. We're then going to take out the bits that we don't want because we don't want to chuck everything into AI because, uh, again, that's going to use up unnecessary tokens. And then it's going to uh, just have the useful information and let us chat with that information. So essentially what we're doing is taking all the information on that web page, passing it into AI, and then being able to chat with that information. So we'll save this workflow and then we will create another workflow. And I'm gonna call this um, retrieve HTML, oh, HTML from URL. Just quickly, AI is moving so quickly these days. If you wanna keep up to date with all the changes when it comes to AI and business, then I've got a link down below where you can get occasional updates from me, check it out. Anyway, back on with the video. Okay, so the first thing that we want on this uh, tool, which we're creating here, is a trigger coming from another workflow because we're going to call it from that other workflow that we've got. So um, I'm going to come in and I'm going to search for a workflow, execute sub workflow, and then go the trigger, which is called when executed by another workflow. Uh, and then what we need to hear is add a field, which we're going to call URL, which is going to be a string, and we're going to let AI determine what the URL being passed into this is. Okay, so we've got our trigger. Then what we want to do is have a HTTP request, which essentially is going to get all that information on the web page. So uh, within the URL, uh, if we execute previous node, we've got a URL, it's blank, that's okay, don't worry about that. We can drag our URL, put it in the URL section, and that's all we'll need to fill in in this part here. Um, so that's fine. Let's hook it up with what we've already got and see it working in the moment. So I'm gonna save that, come across here, go on tools, and I'm gonna click on cool NA10 workflow tool. And then I will select from the list um, and it's gonna be my retrieve HTML from URL demo. That's what I called it. And the URL, we're gonna click this button here, which is allowing AI to define what the URL being passed into that is going to be. So we'll click on that. I'm gonna call it uh, retrieve HTML. And then we need to add a description to tell the agent what this tool does. So we're gonna say, call this tool in order to return the HTML from a URL so we can interact with a web page's information. Yep, spell that all correctly, that should be fine. 
Okay, so now we're gonna give this a test and see what we got. So I'm gonna save it, and then I'm gonna go chat, and I'm gonna say, uh, look at this URL, and this is URL from the NA10 documentation. It is this page here about switches, and uh, I'm dyslexic, I don't like reading stuff, so I'm gonna pass in all of this information and let it do the hard work of explaining what a switch is. Um, what is a switch? Ooh. Simply put. Okay, we go, we can see it's working. And now it's taking a lot of time to do this. And probably the reason for this, we'll have to look into it, is because we, we're not condensing down the information that's getting passed back. It's just passing all the HTML back, which is going to be a little bit expensive if done a lot with AI, but it's probably fine for now. So let's have a look and see what it has been doing. So if we look here, we can see our input. Uh, we can then see it called the tool. So the query was our URL. So it's passing in the URL correctly. And then the output was all of this information here. And you can see it is very messy uh, and it's a lot of information. And obviously the more information there is, the more expensive it's gonna be when we're passing it into AI, which is not what we want. In fact, if we look here, we can see that this used 205,000 tokens, which isn't hugely expensive, but if you're doing this over and over and over again, it's gonna add up. So we're gonna add in something which will hopefully dramatically decrease the amount of tokens uh, that's used each time we do this. So we're gonna go back over to our retrieve HTML uh, tool that we created, and we're gonna add in uh, some code. So we're gonna add a code block in there. So we're gonna leave this as JavaScript, because we want it to be JavaScript, and I'm gonna paste in, I'm gonna take away all of this, and paste in this code here, which I'll put a link to down in the description. You can go find it. Essentially, all this is doing is finding everything that has got these tags on it and just removing it, because that's gonna take away uh, a lot of, on most web pages, a lot of the unneeded information. So uh, we can then get rid of that. That's all we need to do there. Don't need to do anything else. We can save this. Then I'm gonna go back to our chat here. I'm gonna copy this entire uh, request here. So I don't have to type it out again. I'm gonna reset it, I'm gonna save it. Uh, we're gonna go again and we'll see what we get. So we can see it's a lot faster this time running it. And hopefully that's because there are much fewer tokens coming back from the HTML response. Um, and we can see we still get a good response. The switches to know that roots workflow conditionally based upon uh, comparison operations. Yep, fine. Um, we can see that we are uh, still calling the right place and now you can see the output is much 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 more human and it actually is um, way more useful than everything that came back last time and if we look at the tokens let's see what the difference is okay huge difference here so it was 205,000 now it's 3,000 so massive massive difference and a massive saving by throwing in that code block there and we're still getting a good response, right? We're just taking out all of that unnecessary markup in the HTML. And if I want to, I can go on and ask other questions like uh, tell me about uh, routing rules. It's gonna take a second and it's gonna come back. Let's see what it says. And there we go, it's come back and given us information about routing rules in relation to the switch node within uh, NA10. So let's try this another web page. I am going to reload this and I'm gonna say uh, use this website to tell me about oh, today's news. And I'm gonna put in BBC News' website, click go, and let's see what we get. And there we go, uh, what do we got today? Um, North Sea Tanker, something to do with Moscow, something to do with Keir Starmer, stocks, blah, blah, blah. There we go, we can see that we're interacting now with a web page, and you can really throw in any URL that you want to, um, and you can interact with the text on that page. This is something that I use quite often, because again, I'm not a big fan for reading through documentation, that's what I use it for most. I just ping the URL in there, and I can ask it questions specifically about my use case, but there are a million different things you could use this for, and AI is way, way, way more useful when you are interacting with custom data, whether that's your own data or whether that's someone else's data, rather than just the information that the model was trained upon. So there we have it, how you can create your own AI chatbot that interacts with any web page that you want to. I hope you've liked this video. If you have, then please do give it a like. If you wanna see more videos like this, then subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.